Hello and welcome back to the What We Said podcast, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope you're ready for a fantastic, relaxing, riveting weekend ahead of you. Uh, March is over. April is coming up, which is my personal favorite month of the year because it's my birthday and my anniversary and I just love celebrating me. So, <laughs> And it's spring. Yeah, spring it's springtime. Just a fun, a fun season. Um, what have you been up to, Jace? Oh, you know. Um, well, you guys. Let's just jump right into it. Nothing's, right in? as a, nothing's as interesting as what you're about to tell us. We're batching a little, so this happened a little bit before you're hearing it. It happened actually pretty... I found out about this information shortly after I shared the previous owner update last time. Do you feel even more vindicated every time you post about it? The whole internet is like, no, you need a restraining order. Yeah, I actually, I do. I feel two types of way about it. Every time I give a previous owner update, I feel on one hand, like validated because I'm like okay I'm not crazy like I'm not making this a bigger deal than it needs to be like people and you're not being rude yeah I'm not being rude I'm not really doing anything wrong by them or to them like it definitely is validating for Mm -hmm. sure to to have everyone be like this is psychotic behavior um because honestly like even in my personal life but the thing is though is that they almost fire me up more like then they make me more mad I'm like no you're right like I should be so annoyed by this because in my personal life a lot of people are not um like even my parents will be like oh they mean well like they're not you know what I mean they're not scary they're not scary and I'm like no I know and and that's the only other side to it that it's like people like you need a restraining order like this is so scary and I'm like it's not I know I'm talking it up but it also up until this point, and I'll be giving an update shortly, but it hasn't been like scary to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's been annoying. Yeah. It's been annoying. It's been an overstep. It's been, but I haven't been genuinely like, oh, I'm fearful of them. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, they're just so annoying. That's how yeah. I feel. And the things that have pushed it over the edge up until this point, going into your house when you're not home with the key after they sold the house to you. Yeah. Where it's like Where we didn't live there, but they were trespassing. Yeah. Well, you had owned the house completely. For like a day Trespassing. Yeah. And the drive-by. Those yeah. are two physical things and, that they crossed the line. And quite the literally. coming to give us like the tools. And oh, yeah. Like, we don't want them. Yeah. The physical things. The physical it's like, things. you've crossed the line. Yeah. Then they sent the letter, which wasn't really a oh, letter. It was they sent, the letter. They sent an envelope, but it was just like tax, property tax stuff. It wasn't anything from him personally. But like, Okay. So anyway, all of that. It's like a clingy ex. Yes. It's just like annoying, right? And people are like, oh, with a baby moving in, they're like, that's scary. And I'm like, they're not. I'm telling you guys, like the energy that they bring is not scary. It's just annoying. Boomer, annoying. They're (laughs) obsessed with their house. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Okay. So I was at the house the other day. Leif and I were at the house with my parents, actually. They came into town and we were showing them updates. We were walking through it and our contractor was there. The way I would actually die for my contractor, (laughs) I am so obsessed. Like, he is the best. I'm going to literally miss him. I'm like, wait, once he's done with the house, like, he has to still, like, come over for dinner or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm obsessed with him. He's the sweetest angel. And from what I'm understanding, he's, like, a gold, like, a, what is it called? Not a gold mine, but just, he's, (laughs) like, one in a million. Yeah, Yeah, a diamond in the rough. From what I hear, people are, have so many nightmare situations with contractors where they're super unreliable. They don't yeah. do what they say. The timelines they give are never accurate. Um, but he is so reliable. He answers my calls every time. If he doesn't, he calls me back in two minutes. Mm-hmm. He's so on top of it. He has like the most pure, honest, wholesome energy. I just like really, really like it. Me and Leif are like, we got so lucky. So anyway, we love him so much. You make him the godfather. Of your <laughs> Literally, child. I'm like, and he is also daddy. Um, he is. I, I we he's great. So we have kind of like a closer relationship with him. Now. We're we're talking to him all the time. We're over there every day. He's at our house every day, so we talk to him often. And I feel like we're kind of starting to like crack jokes with each other and like get each other's humor and whatever. So I the told him. Stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I told him, I was like, oh, the old owners, I told him that they drove by Mm -hmm. just because I thought it was like a funny tidbit. Did did he know the history of them being weird? A little. We told them that he was, 
that they were just like really attached to their house and that to be fair, we're doing way more than we even thought we were going to do. We were not planning on doing an addition. When we moved in, we were like, we're keeping the structure of the house. We're just like, there were like two walls that we wanted down. Mm -hmm. We're doing way more than we thought we were. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have been seeing Factor all over social media. I've seen a lot of people that I follow talking about them. And it's a lot of like health girlies. So, you know, it's got to be good. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So, what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. These are two minute meals, so you can fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. They honestly look really, really good. They have a bunch of options, like I mentioned. And sometimes these are good for specifically lunches, I think. Um, obviously, you can use them what, whenever. They have a ton of different, you know, meals and different things you can pick from. But I feel like lunch for me is like the hardest uh, meal to remember and to make it healthy and well-rounded because I'm kind of just like running around all day. And you have to really be intentional about like sitting down and making a good lunch. They also have a lot of options for breakfast, like pancakes, smoothies, and more. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. It's also just so flexible for your schedule, so you can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime, which is nice if you know you're going out of town or something comes up. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. Factor is also less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash what we said 50 and use the code what we said 50 to get 50% off. That's code what we said 50 at factormeals.com slash what we said 50 to get 50% off. Go check it out. After I think just it kind of started snowballing, it's like, well, if we're going to take that wall down and we're going to put insulation, like we might as well put might insulation well. in this room. Well, if we're going to, you know, we decided we wanted a bigger main bedroom and closet area. So we did an addition and like we, we're doing a lot more than we anticipated. Yeah. So we had told him originally like, and he had, he had met them because he had come in with us when they were supposed to be gone. Oh yeah. And he would always be there. So he had met them before he knows who they are. And we had told him like. When they weren't supposed to be there. Exactly. And we had told him they're just really like, they love their house. And so you know, whatever. We don't want to be like, smash this wall down, <laughs> take the cinder block wall. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I told him we we're over there and I was like, guess what? They drove by the house when we were here to like, I think they were trying to like see what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, they actually came by last week. And before they had driven by, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It was definitely close, close quarters. Uh-huh. So either way to me, it's bad because you either drove by, saw me yeah. outside my house and then proceeded to drive by a different day, go up to my contractor and ask what, I guess I just spoiled it. Yeah. They <laughs> came by, they didn't come into the house, but they like parked like right in front of the house and, and our contractor was outside and they got out of the car and were like, oh, what are you guys doing to the house? Like we were the owners um, and we worked really hard on this house. Like, what are you changing? And our contractor said, he's like, I told him, <laughs> he's like, I told him it was just a small remodel, <laughs> like just changing a few windows. Yeah. But you can clearly see the house is freaking gone. <laughs> the house is literally <laughs> beams. It's only beams. <laughs> you can see the backyard from the front of the house. <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, Oh so anyway, he's like, I told him like, oh, we love him for that though. We, king, king. He's like, I told him like small remodel. We're just changing a few things, like changing a few windows, whatever. But he, he was saying like, uh, yeah, the, the owner was saying basically like, oh, what are, what changes are you guys making? Cause like we worked very hard on this house. So basically. what is he trying to accomplish there? Like Your guess stop, is as good as mine. Stop doing what you're doing because we work. So the contractor is going to be like, you're so right. I will undo what I've done. Let me go get your walls back from the dump and put them back into the house. Is the hard work in the room with us? <laughs> where, 
where was the hard work done? And like, I don't doubt that you, you know, you put time you and lived, effort. You, you time, put time and effort. Like you lived in this home for a while, but I'm like, am I missing something? Yeah. Okay. And this gets even deeper. You guys, this gets, goes even further. So anyway, he's like, Oh, what are you guys changing? Cause like we worked really hard on this house. Like we were the owners and stuff. And, and anyway, our contractor just was like, Oh, we're just making a few changes. He didn't really tell me much more information mm-hmm. than that. I think then they left. What did you do? when he told you my jaw dropped to the floor. I literally was like, <laughs> and Leif was not with me. He was uh, around the corner. Yeah. I, it was me and my dad talking to him. And then uh, my mom and Leif were around the corner looking at something that anyway, some part of the house. And so I literally am just like, you're kidding. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no. And then he tells me more. But anyway, then I go to Leif and I'm like, he just told me that they came over and Leif oh. jaw dropped too. So anyway, um, then he proceeds to say, also your neighbors came by. So it's our next door neighbors who were good friends with them. They're also old. I've told you they were like, oh, can we use the plants? Like whatever, which is fine. They, they basically were saying, if you're going to get rid of these plants, like, can we have them? The, the yeah. neighbors, which, which of course is fine. A hundred percent. What are you going to do with them? Yeah. Who knows? And I don't care. It's like, if they're going to go to a good home, you're going to use them and we're not using them by all means. Like that's totally fine. Um, so that wasn't an issue to me. But, but you know that the previous owners, the wife, she asked her friend to, to ask do that. Them well, that's what Leif said. You. He's like, it's probably because they, they're probably getting them for the owners. I'm like, then why didn't they take them? Like, if they wanted them so bad, take them away. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, so then the he says, our contractor says also, and this is like a different day. Your neighbors came by. He tells us who, which we, so we know them. They came by and asked what we were doing to the house and if they could come in and take a look. If they, like, they're no. working on it. We're not there at the moment because we're not there all day, every day. We come by every single day at some point, but like, we're not there all day. No, yeah. you can't come in my house. Yes. The neighbors come by and say, can we please, can we please come in and take a look? Like, we just wanted to see the changes. Um, our old neighbors, like, yeah. they worked really hard on this house. So we just wanted to see, like, what they're doing to it. You guys, you guys, you guys. I, I literally Rats. was like, am I, am I going insane? No. Am I missing something? Because you know they're doing this it. House. You know they're doing it for the owners. Use the same verbiage. Yes. They're doing it to tell the owners what you guys did. They don't care themselves. Is this insane or am I? That is insane. This is not. I'm that just, they asked to go in your house to look around. They're your neighbors. Yes. What in what world? In what world would you go over to a neighbor you've met twice? twice yeah. You're, they're doing renovations and asked to go in. In, in that way as well. Not even just like, I want to see, like, I'm so excited for you guys. I want to see what you've, what you've done to desecrate this yeah, sacred home. Literally. You guys, I, I can't, I can't overstate enough. There is no historical <laughs> charm about this house. <laughs> There's nothing about the house that needed to stay. It's like they're acting like, as if that house was the Liberty Bell or something. You this guys. historic landmark that the whole neighborhood needs to protect. When this house was <laughs> remodeled in 2006, probably. It's it's starting to make me feel like I'm insane because I'm like, what what is the, like, what, seriously, what piece of information am I missing no. that makes this house so special? I've seen people who have built a house with their bare hands, had multiple generations of family live in the house, sell it, Never go back. Move on. It's not normal. No, it's not. And and again, then people are like on TikTok or in comments being like, there's a body in the house. Like something happened. Like just obviously making like being crazy. But also- But now it's not sounding so crazy. I'm like, but now, no. The thing is we've demolished that thing yeah legitimately from the inside out. There was nothing, there was nothing to report back on. And every time we go in the house- I feel such great energy. It's not like it's a scary, like I want to get that clear because the internet, I just feel like takes something and runs. It's yeah. like, oh, that house must be, it's like, no, the house is, it, the house is great. The yeah. house is fine. It has great energy. I will be saging every ounce of it. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, I'm so excited for it to be done. And our neighbors aren't, I'm not now like, oh, our neighbors are crazy. Like they're going to be a nightmare. I, I don't feel that way. I just think like, 
it's they were friends with them and it's the same generation and like it's just I'm not trying to downplay it I'm just because I do think it's like inappropriate and I think it's so annoying yeah. but I'm just saying like all of it is just an annoying uh, it's so annoying and I'm getting to the point now where I was like Leif and I have been pushed to the point and again we will handle things like and take care of measures offline. Like I'm not going to be tell, telling ev- my every move of how we're going to protect ourselves. But like I was saying, like if I, if I caught them like driving again, oh. like they have pushed Leif and I to a point where like, yeah. we would not be nice about it no. anymore. Like you've, no. you're, you're, you're done. Like you've had literally, we've probably given you 10 chances at this point oh, to yeah. be normal. And like, if Three you're going you're to, out and you are at like 10 strikes. Yes. Like if you're going to drive by, Mm-hmm. My house, like you're not no. gonna be met with you like will empathy be met with and papers. Yes, like <laughs> yeah. this is not you've you've gone too far. So Terrifying. anyway, um, they're yeah. so weird. They're, it's so they're so weird for that. And I'm like, I just feel bad for them that they have this attachment to something that is just not necessary for their mental health. Seriously. Move on, please. Just move on for yourself. And my dad was like, he's always very like you know, trying to see things from a perspective, like, and he was just saying like, you know, himself, he was saying, I'm a very nostalgic person and, da, 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 and I'm like, yeah. And you wouldn't do that. No. And he's like, no, I, he's like, no, I wouldn't do that. But he was saying, you know, nostalgia means different things to different people. And he was like, also you are one of the least nostalgic people. Yeah. Like, he was saying me personally, yeah. he's like, nostalgia is not one of your character traits that you like that's not a big part of your life is being um, nostalgic and sentimental. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, I think for you, it's like even yeah. harder for you to understand like what the the tie is, Yeah, um, which is fair. Like, again, I'm not excusing their behavior, but I do think like me specifically, I've, I've said this a million times. I've never been much of like a sentimental person. Like once I move on from something, I move on, like especially physical mm-hmm. items and things. I just like don't care. I don't have much attachment. Yeah. So I think it is mind blowing to me. Like the yeah. fact that they're this Even attached, so. I'm like, I do not get it. Like, what mm-hmm. is the deal? What move are you on. so attached to? Just move on. It's a physical, it's a house you've, mm-hmm. you've moved. Like it's done. I don't know to me. So I'm probably like, I don't say the least understanding, but it's like in this scenario, I do lack yeah. understanding and empathy for this specific situation. Cause I'm just like, what could you be so obsessed with? No, I mean- even the most nostalgic person though, I don't see them doing that. No. That, that That's past the point of, you know, remembering and taking time to reflect. They are pushing boundaries. They are quite literally trying to control something that they have no control over. Yeah. That's past the point of nostalgia. That's like not letting go. Yeah. It's attachment. It's, yeah. it's deep crazy. attachment. Anyway. It's crazy. Like normal nostalgic people, I would consider myself to be nostalgic. I would never ever do that. Never. I would maybe two years after we moved. Drive by. Drive by when I'm in town. Like yeah. I'd be like, oh, we should go see the house. If you're in the neighborhood, literally drive by yeah. for two seconds. Yeah. That, that is the extent of, I think, and I do think that is normal. Like, yeah. To want to see an old house and drive by it once, like. But, but again, the frequency. So what I was saying about in the oh, beginning. He must have gone by. If those are the times he's seen someone yeah. there. Yeah. He's been in that house. Chelsea. <laughs> no, he's not been in the house. He's not been in the house. But, well, it wouldn't be hard. There's literally. <laughs> okay, anyway. I mean, he has <laughs> been in the house. When you guys first when, moved out. But. Yeah, yeah. Um. I'm just saying, if you need to hire Sophie to sit outside of your house. Be a guard dog? An attack. Absolutely. She can. Yeah, lady's not cutting it. (laughs) She's not scaring anyone. Yeah. Um, What I was going to say is the frequency at which you were, I don't think, I I don't know if I finished my thought like literally 10 minutes ago of saying, either way it's bad to me because you either. uh, Oh yeah. You either. The timeline. Yeah, the timeline of when he, because I'm not sure our contractor didn't know exactly. He was like, oh, it was last week when he did that. And, And when I saw him was also like around that time. So I'm like, okay, so again, you either saw me outside and mm-hmm. you you were driving by. That was obvious. And, and you then have no you, shame. And you have no shame. And then you separately, like afterwards, were, like went by again. That's very shameless. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa, where you 
drove by, you stopped, you asked our contractor, what are you guys doing? He answered you. You kind of saw an idea and then you got back in your car, whatever. And then days later you have to drive by again. You're obsessed. Yeah. What are you seeing You're within three days that's going to change? Yeah. What are you, why are you driving by? What are you like witnessing? That's, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is the point? Yeah. He's, it's We're like, going to catch you. <laughs> I'm talking to them. We're going to catch you. <laughs> Don't go back to the house. Okay. Or we will blast your face all over social media. Literally. You know that news outlets have reached out to me to like talk about it. Really? And I declined because <gasps> I was like. That's even scarier. Well, it was like, this was like at the beginning. It wasn't yeah. even, they didn't even know the half of it. No, now you're but, like. Mm -mm. Yeah, they're like, oh, can we interview you for this? And I was like, no, like, I don't want this to be like mm -hmm. a thing that they see and my neighbors see. And it's like a thing that uh, it makes my house look weird. Like, I'm just like, no. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I don't want this like. This is not Tainting what I want to be. House. Yeah, this yeah, is not the sure. vibe. Like I just bought my first home and we're like so excited to be renovating it. And no, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. So I'm like, I do not hold your house responsible at all. I feel like your house is perfect, beautiful, so exciting. And it has nothing to do with the horrible energy that the owners have it within themselves. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if even if you didn't sage the house, I think it would be perfectly fine. I think they bring very weird energy yes. as people. Yes, to I agree. It. And when they're out of it, the energy is <clears throat> gone. Great. It's great. It's it's Yeah. I I feel the reason I'm saying that is because I actually feel like I am big into like how I feel energetically in mm -hmm. a space and I've actually toured homes that I don't like the, yeah. the vibes. I'm like, I don't like I don't mm -hmm. like the way I feel in here. And I never felt like that with yeah. this house. They annoyed me, but yeah. I never felt like, oh, this is weird, bad energy. Mm -hmm. Like I always was like, I love this house. Like yeah. I love the, I could like totally picture it. Like when we had first mm -hmm. moved in. And also, even if to go back to, okay, so say I moved out of a home, even if it's my childhood home, uh -huh. which I have, you know, one before when I, when I was growing up till I was like in second grade. Mm-hmm. If I, and it has, it actually is cute and charming. It has like a little porch um, bench, like swinging out here. Mm -hmm. It has a cute fountain. If I drove by and I saw someone remodeled it and took that bench down and took that fountain down, as a healthy individual, most people would be like mentally aware and self-aware. Yeah. They would be like- Sad for two seconds. Sad for two seconds of like, oh, my memory's on that bench. But how cute that this new, and then if I saw a new family, like- Playing doing or something, something in the front yard, I would be so like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. It's like moved on to it. That's how they should feel towards you. Like, this is so exciting for you guys. You're making this house your own. You're having your own family in here. You're going to have your own memories and these, you know, things Literally. that you're creating. Why do they want you to live memories? They want you to like relive their, their life. Yes. Like, no, we want you guys to be us when we're younger and use the same things we used so that we can never let our memory die. <laughs> Or something weird. I don't know. No, it's it's completely, you're spot on. I feel like it's it's very unhealthy behavior. Mm -hmm. Like it's weird attachment issues that are not normal. I don't know anyone who would act like that. Like no one in my life. Like no, no one that I know would do that. Not even the most sentimental person I know no. would do that. Mm -mm. Like it's, it's past the point. It's past the point. And, and again, like I don't, I, I just. It's like entitlement too, a little bit. Yeah. They think we're entitled this generation. I know. You think you own the house that I bought from you. I know. And that's what I have to keep taught, like reminding myself over and over is that we literally bought that house. We paid for it. It is ours. We are paying mortgage on it. We, yeah. it's not their house anymore. Like I obviously, and that's obvious to me. And I do think like I've been chill. I've been patient. I've been like, okay, whatever. Because you guys have been beyond patient. We, we don't, and and Leif and I both have that that personality anyway. We we're not super like defensive, defensive or con or confrontational or like you need to get up. We're just like okay, you're weird. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think like the fact that it's pushed us both to be like okay, enough. Like, yeah, it is crazy. I'm like mm -hmm. you. You guys have really you've done enough. Yeah. So Easter is pretty much here. Okay. So if you um are like me. And you procrastinate some things when it comes to holidays, you know, last minute. Maybe you need something for the Easter baskets. Maybe you need something for Easter brunch. Whatever it is, Macy's has got you covered. They have so much good stuff for Easter. I got 
so much of my Easter basket for Case last year from Macy's, um, they have like stuff for every age. So I got him some cute little bunny um, stuffed animals. They have treats and goodies. I also got stuff for um, like an Easter brunch, like serveware with cute little butterflies. Very cute spring and Easter themed things to elevate whatever you're doing for your holiday. If you have kids or you want to get an Easter basket for your spouse, for yourself, or if you are going to be hosting a little Easter Sunday brunch or something of the sort, they have like pastel outfits, they have serveware, they have a lot of different stuff for uh, the kitchen and for hosting, which we want to do a whole hosting episode coming maybe sometime soon. But they also, if you do have kids, they have Toys R Us, Easter basket goodies, from books to stuffed animals and even slime. Leif and I were just talking about how kids probably freaking love slime because as adults, when I saw slime the other day at the store, I wanted to play with it. So you can find it all in store and online at Macy's.com, whether you need an outfit, whether you need some stuff for hosting or some cute little Easter goodies. Easter is a very cute holiday. So you gotta, you gotta act accordingly. Macy's.com. Check it out. Goodbye. Anyway, and I feel like, yeah, now it's going to have to be something more severe. Like if there's a next thing, like there will be no next thing is how I feel. And yeah. if there is like, it's not going to be. Not going to be pretty. No. Like it's not just going to be like a funny little thing. Like no. it's going to be stop immediately. Yeah. And, you know, other things will be involved. Like, yeah. no, not You're done with that. You're done. So, <laughs> anyway, there's my update. Sorry, I talked about that for much longer no, than I thought I would. No, it's the craziest actually the fact that there are more installments is crazy. I thought that I was making a funny TikTok story time we talked about it on the mm -hmm. podcast. I thought no. it was just like a funny, like I did They're think a little it was more crazy. Obsessed than most. Yeah, I was just like, oh, this is, you know, interesting lore to start my homeowner journey. Oh, no. Like funny, thought it would be like interesting to hear about. I never imagined that it, I would like keep having updates. Like yeah. I, I was like, oh, I'm sure that was just like a one time story, yeah. you know, fun little story time. No. And you thought maybe by putting it out, maybe people would be like, I had a similar experience. Yeah. Not one person. yeah everyone's like, these are freaks. Yeah. Not one person. Like, like, I freak. relate. Yeah. Everyone's like, this is not okay. No. Wow. Well, I'm excited to see your house. It, yeah. It's, it really is starting to, there's starting to be a ton of progress on it. So mm -hmm. I see the I, vision. I was going to get into our kitchen situation, but I feel like I've already kind of talked about it and it's like, just, it's more bad vibes. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a lot of good vibes happening. There's a lot of um, exciting, like, yeah, just happy, mm -hmm. fun, cool things happening in the house. But yeah, renovating a house is just a literal full-time job. Like yeah. it is so much work to pick out everything. Mm -hmm. I just didn't even realize how time-consuming it would be. Oh it's gosh, so I'm exciting, sure. but it's, it is truly like just thing after thing. Like, oh, that went out of stock. Now we need to do this. Like we need these valves. We mm -hmm. need this. The plumbing needs to go a foot da deeper so we need just you know weird things that I'm like I don't know what's happening but I understand yeah anyway love that so there's my update oh man I was shook also this no one cares about this on the podcast but it's a personal question did you were your parents in the car when you guys drove by our house yeah and you said hi oh I didn't see them oh really but I after you said that I was like oh dang yeah we all we, I'm yeah. like, we all saw you. <laughs> we <laughs> we were, all were watching. We just drove by and yeah, my parents were in town. And yeah. We're like, hey oh, guys, cute. we opened the window. Cute. Paige was telling me that we were both on um, a podcast, a new Dear Media podcast. And Paige was telling me that you were saying that you'll like drive by my house and like try not to look in. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I kind of do the same, but I'll drive by. But I'm like, but I do look. <laughs> well, um, if we're like in the front yard. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I feel weird not looking in like, I know. if you guys are in the front yard, I'm just like. No, no, no. True. <laughs> I, I most mean I mostly mean like looking in like to see your window or something yeah, like yeah. that. Be like, I don't want to look and see if their windows are open. Me like something. sick on the couch. <laughs> yeah. No. Luckily yeah, I haven't been so anymore. Funny. I am a shameless house looker inner. <laughs> yeah. When I'm on a windows. walk. Especially in a beautiful neighborhood. I'm like, you want me to look here. You want me to look into your house. Literally, you're asking for it. We're like, yeah. you're rich. You're asking for it. <laughs> yeah, you're asking you for it. You have a beautiful home. I don't care if you have a ring camera. You will hear my opinion on your house. We'll be like walking by and the ring camera's out. I'm like, <gasps> I, I love this door. Like, oh my gosh, Nick, look at those windows. I never even thought about like a ring camera picking up my Yeah, sometimes commentary. Nick will be like, eh, I'm not down with that. I'm like, Nick, 
Quiet. They have a ring camera. <laughs> it's going to go viral. I never, literally I really never even thought about that. Not that I'm like, I guess, giving my opinions left and right, but like, I wonder what those cameras pick up. I know. That I've said on walks or something. I know. Also, those there's um, a bunch of houses on the beach. There are some beaches where the houses are literally on the beach and you can walk by the sidewalk to their backyard. I'm yeah. looking in your house. Oh, for I'm sure. I'm looking in your backyard. I'm looking in your house. What are you watching on TV? Oh, I'm sure they're used to it. They want that, right? Yeah. That's why they bought it. <laughs> That's why they bought it. For That's why they it. leave the doors open and stuff. It's like, yeah. I'm not trying to be creepy. No, I just it's just very, see. if you live in an area like that, that's very like, you're kind of signing up for people being legitimately in your backyard. Yeah. So anyways, anywho, on to the advice. Wow. Let's get into it. All right. I'll go first. Kay. Hey, love the podcast so much all the way from Ireland. Wow. Slay. I am 20 turning 21 in April. In Ireland, it's common to have a wild party to celebrate your, your 21st. However, I'm not a party late night girl and I don't drink alcohol. Any ideas of how I can celebrate with my friends and family that is still special but is more suited to me? I have no ideas. That's cute. That is cute. I love a party. Oh, man. I feel like there's so many things you could do. So many things. You could really get creative. Does I mean, she have to plan it herself? Is that kind of what she's getting at? Maybe. That, like she's needs the ideas because yeah I'm like they need to throw a party like other people for need to you. throw a party for you yeah but maybe you want to give them ideas so they don't plan something crazy like that you don't like yeah exactly yeah okay so it's in April I was trying to think like something seasonal I don't know what the but weather's it's in like Ireland. in Ireland do you no um let me look it up because if it's warm outside or if it's beautiful weather something outside would be so fun mm-hmm. Ireland's so beautiful from what I've seen. It says it's kind of cold. Cold oh. to cool throughout Ireland. Can you just rent out a castle for the night in Ireland? Like, how much is that? That would be a sleigh. Because you, you should rent out a castle. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, I want to do this for my 30th. We're going to Ireland. <laughs> rent out a castle and do, like, an escape room in the castle. Like, set up your own. Wow. Like, haunt. Well, I guess haunted, maybe. It's not April spring vibes. <laughs> but, um an escape room or like a mystery or play some kind of game mm -hmm. with a bunch of your friends or a murder mystery, something fun themed in the castle. Can you do that? That I'm would sure be you amazing. Can. Yeah. People have tons of castles in Ireland. Right? I don't know like what part of Ireland she lives in and how big, like, you know, how far away she is from that option. But oh, I've never been to Ireland, so I don't know anything about it. I'm That's just probably expensive. To, I'm, I'm thinking definitely like a theme though, mm -hmm. for sure. Like you said, either like a mystery party or whatever, something that you like. And again, I just don't know what you like yeah. at all. Did she give us any indication no. of what she likes? No, Hobbies. she said more suited to me. More suited to me. Okay, I'm reading your mind. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, something themed where people have to dress up. Yeah. Put a little extra effort in. That always makes a party fun and not just, especially if you're not relying on other things to make the night crazy and mm -hmm. fun, you have to... You know, having everyone dress up, maybe get into a character, or even just dress on theme. Yeah. If you're doing. You gotta have a theme. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, you could do an activity, but again, I don't know anything about your hobbies or, or anything. But it depends if it's like daytime or nighttime. But I'm thinking, this isn't really a good idea or example, but I'm thinking something like this like, okay, we're go going to hire someone to teach us to like, decorate cakes or we're mm -hmm. gonna like hire someone to teach us how to we're gonna do like a pottery night yeah um but I was even thinking to tailor even more to her it's like they could all be making an object for her or something mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like yes. some something like yeah. that I can't really think of the activity you would do but or I that has to do with her you should maybe try and think of your favorite going off of that Favorite movie, TV show, favorite, something that you love. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm trying to think, say you're super into the traders, which is in Scotland, mm -hmm. but you know, something along those lines where it's like a show you're notoriously into yeah. and then kind of base it off of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe if it's like when you were saying hire someone to maybe you're super, this is so random into like Vanderpump rules, <laughs> you know? You could all dress up like a character and you have someone come help you make mocktails or something right. for the night. And yeah. it's just kind of on theme. 
it is nice to hire. I wouldn't even, I don't ever, ever even do this for like any of my events, but I feel like it is so nice to hire mm-hmm. someone else to like yeah. teach an activity or do an event or mm-hmm. host in some way. Yeah. Um, that can kind of lead. So you don't have to lead yeah, the but group, it, but it does depend on your, your budget. But also I think just for us in general, when we do our like themed girls nights and stuff like, which that's not a whole birthday party, but I feel like the theme of it all is something that elevates it a Mm -hmm. lot is being like, okay, everyone dress in denim. Like, even if there's no really rhyme or reason, it's just like, you know, if you do rent out like a really cool, like a castle Airbnb and you're like, I want to have a like slumber party with all my Mm -hmm. best friends or I want (gasps) to do whatever and like dress according, you know, dress like this and we're going to do this activity, whatever. Yeah. Wow. I want to go to... It is Ireland that has the castles, right? Or is that Scotland? All of them. All of them, them. maybe. Yeah, France. So France has amazing castles as well. For my 30th birthday next year, okay, we're going to go to Scotland. We're going to get, we're going to redo the traders. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And hire Alan to be the host. (laughs) Wow. She's got a big budget. So I'm going to start saving up. And we're actually just going to be on the traders. (laughs) cast me no but that, that would does be sound amazing fun. i know oh would that be so fun yeah all your friends like playing tree actually that might get messy you're all friends and you're all having to lie to each other it's like one thing if you're all it's just like playing whatever. mafia we've done true. that a million times true no that'd be fun <laughs> for weeks we're just there for weeks Please. forgets like all responsibilities <laughs> living a new life in scotland in the, in the castle no that's a sleigh though that would be so fun I'm 25 and currently 19 weeks pregnant with a boy with my first baby and severely struggling with my changing body. I'm doing my best to stay active and eat healthy, but I only seem to see my body changing as negative and it is ruining this experience for me. Is there any advice you have on how to manage the stress of a changing body through pregnancy and postpartum? Mm. Okay. I keep reminding myself over and over. I saw this TikTok. And I reposted it on my story. And I'm not joking when I say it like, I can rarely say this about a random TikTok I come across. It like fundamentally rewired my brain in my brain chemistry in the best way possible. And maybe I can repost it once this episode comes out. Um, I think it went pretty viral, but it's basically just this girl. And it's kind of like a poem or something. Do you you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And she's just talking about how, and this is again, pretty, pretty obvious information, but I think hearing it from her in this specific way, I really liked. And she was essentially just saying how she's never been to a public pool or a public location and like remembered what someone's body looked like, like seen someone hyper fixated on it, remembered it and thought about it when she went home or something. And she, she just goes on to be like, I, you know, when I'm talking to someone about one of my friends and I'm like, oh, you have to meet her. Like it would never occur to me to be like, oh, and she kind of has big arms. Like she's like, when I'm talking about my friends, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so funny. Like, she's so fun. You'll love her. And I, I just think about that so much because, and not to invalidate what you're saying, because I completely can relate in a lot of ways. But I try and remind myself so much that it is truly just the least important thing is how we physically look. And no one cares as much as you do. No one notices as much as you do. And I think it's important to remember that because that that's how I feel. Like sometimes I'll think of, okay, you know, my friends, like e- even when I have a friend who's complaining about a body thing, you know, because we're all girls, we all have insecurities and like, if I have a friend who's like, oh, I just don't like how I look in this. Like, I never, not, I don't want to say I never agree with them, but it's like, I'm always just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, mm-hmm. I don't see you that way at all. Like, I think you look so cute, but I also validate that you feel that way. The point being that I don't think, and again, what matters is how you feel. It doesn't, yeah. it's not always an outside perception thing, but I do think it is truly just, a neutral thing. Like mm-hmm. how you look is just, it doesn't, it's not that deep. Yeah. I agree. I also think it takes time too. Cause at first it can be, it can be so shocking when it happens in such a short period of time, which I think is one of the most difficult things about pregnancy, postpartum body changes mm-hmm. is it's, it's not gradual. It's so fast. Like within a 
couple months, your body is just so Looking different. so different than it did. Yeah. yeah. So give yourself time. I feel like that is, you know, every time you see yourself and you think negative thoughts, try and just move on and just be like, oh, well, I guess this is just how it is right now. And it will get easier every time if you just try to move through it. And that's the only way to get through it. Because you can't, as much as you want to justify or like tell yourself why it's okay or blah, blah, blah. It just does take time getting used mm-hmm. to your new body and adjusting to the changes and trying to accept it over time. But it just, at least for me, it doesn't happen overnight and it just gets better and better with time. I don't know if this is horrible advice. I saw this girl post the other day. She was just talking about how she's like gained a, a more weight in her pregnancy than she thought she would or something. And she was saying like, I just keep saying like, I'll deal with this later. Like I'm just pregnant right now. And and I don't know if that's like, yeah, bad, yeah, bad advice. But like, it kind of spoke to me in a way because I have not worked out nearly as much as I mm-hmm. thought I would during my pregnancy. And when I say nearly, I mean pretty much not at all. And yeah. like, I thought I'd be working out like four to five times a week. Mm-hmm. And partly that's like a decision. Partly it's like I've been really just haven't felt up to it and whatever else. But that's very normal. That's that's usually the case, honestly. I've just, I think for me, I always was so, and this is probably just literally conditioning and like our society, but I've always looked at girls who work out uh, super consistently and like eat really well during their pregnancy, like as very impressive. Like mm-hmm. I'm just like, that is amazing. Like yeah. I, and I've always wanted to be like that because I think it's amazing. And I do, mm-hmm. I still do. I think it's yeah. inspiring. I think it's cool. Like, so I'm not trying to now say that it's not, but I, I'm just saying like, I think now being in the position of being pregnant and like not living up to those kind of like expectations I thought I would, I'm trying to do the same. Just like give myself grace where it's like, okay, this is maybe different than I thought it would look. Mm -hmm. I can still really admire girls who do that and I can still try to do it when I feel up to it, but I can also just like, I don't know. Yeah. If you are wanting to cook, but after a long day, you know, going food shopping, getting all the ingredients, obviously that can be very time consuming and a little bit daunting. Enter Marley Spoon. This podcast is sponsored by Marley Spoon. Marley Spoon knows bland food is boring, so they created the best tasting meal kit that money can buy. And with our code, what we said, you can get up to 25 free meals. That is a ton. So you can choose from over 100 different recipes every week. They are delicious. They have Cajun spiced chicken, poached salmon, butternut squash gnocchi, vegan burrito bowl. If you guys go on their website, the food, it's, they have, first of all, just great branding and the food looks incredible. Many of their recipes are also completely customizable. So whether you're looking for vegetarian meals, family-friendly dishes, or low-carb options, Marley Spoon has the food that you want to eat. They even have an in-house registered dietitian who actually assesses every recipe so it takes the guesswork out of eating healthy. Marley Spoon also saves you from making that extra grocery haul with their online market of pantry essentials, which is absolutely fantastic. You can shop their selection of 125 plus items with like seasonal produce, ready to heat options, meal shortcuts, extra proteins, and handy snacks and easily add them to your next Marley Spoon box. So they've got it all. With meal planning and food shopping taken care of, making delicious food at home has finally become effortless. This is the solution we've all been waiting for. So experience the most personalized meal kit with Marley Spoon. Head to marleyspoon.com slash offer slash what we said and use code what we said for up to 25 free meals. That's right, up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. One last time, that's marleyspoon.com backslash offer backslash what we said for up to 25 free meals and make sure you use our promo code what we said so they know we sent you. It'll be linked in the show notes. Deal with, no, I don't wanna say deal with it later, but do you know what I mean? It's like, let me just be in this moment. I've waited to be pregnant for a long time. Now I'm not gonna like ruin my pregnancy experience by being like, I should do this more. It's like, Mm -hmm. I'm just like trying to get through it. And like, yeah be happy and healthy and that looks different for everyone. And I can, I don't have to figure this all out right now. Like my body is changing. This is what's happening and I don't have to solve it. Like there's nothing to solve. Just let it run its course. And I'm sure it will take time. I think as well for me, at least when I'm not pregnant, it feels as though you don't have a good excuse when you're not 
you know, trying your best to stay healthy and stay active when you are feeling especially unhealthy or like you're not feeling comfortable in your body. You're like, well, I don't really have many physical excuses. Like I am when perfectly- When you're not pregnant. Yeah, when saying? I'm not pregnant. Yeah. I have, I'm perfectly capable to go out, go to the gym or go on a walk, you know. But when you're pregnant, there's, it's easy to keep that same mindset for me where I'm like, no excuses, get up, do this. Yeah. And you have to remember that they're, it's just different. It's mm-hmm. completely different. Your body's going through um, so much. I saw this um, doctor on, he was male, but we will <laughs> respect what he says. He was being, he was talking to pregnant girls and he was saying, you know, the nine months of pregnancy is so insane. It's like one of the most miraculous times that a body can go through, but nothing comes without a price. So there are, you know, it's not, I think what I'm trying to say is sometimes in my, to myself, I'm like, I'm, I'm just making an excuse. Like people can still do things while they're yeah, like pregnant. other people. I see other girls yeah, doing stuff. It doesn't so. have to change anything. Yeah. He's basically saying like nothing, like nothing that amazing comes without a price. And for everyone, it's different. Some people, they physically don't feel any different and that's their thing. But for most everyone who becomes pregnant, has a baby, you know, any anything having to do with <laughs> reproduction, fertility. Yeah. There is a physical price most of the mm-hmm. time, which is just how it is. It doesn't have to be like a bad thing and we don't have to fight against that. Like, no, it doesn't have to. We can have our cake and eat it too. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's just-, just things that you just... And it's honestly, for me at least, this is why I'm saying this, is because it's easier to just be like, yeah, I guess that is kind of the price and that's just how life is. I don't have to have this entitlement that I get to have everything I want and everything has to be perfect along with it. And it makes it so much easier to just adjust to what you're dealing with at that time. Mm -hmm. So if you are dealing with weight gain, if you are- Especially because she said she's like trying her best to eat healthy and stuff. It's like, that's literally all you can do. Then just keep doing that. just be- yeah, try your best. That's yeah. literally all you can do is like yeah. put your best foot forward, put your best effort in and like mm-hmm. give it a sec, give it time yeah. and just try your best yeah. to deal with it. Different chapters of life are different and they're different for a reason. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I feel like there was a chapter for me where I was super consistent with Pilates. I felt like I, I felt really strong and whatever. And I'm not in that like chapter anymore yeah. at the moment. I don't feel that way, but it's fine. Like, yeah. I'll probably get back to it at some point and that'll be great. But like, yeah, you know, and if I feel up to it, I actually, I don't know if I was telling this on the podcast. I was like, I woke up kind of like 4 a.m. probably the other night. I'll just like wake up to, to pee or something. And then sometimes I can't fall back asleep for a little bit. And I woke up and I had no nausea at all. Like this was again, like a few weeks ago when you're listening to this, but um, I like felt no nausea where I was just like, Oh my gosh, I think I feel normal. Like waiting for it to come in. Yeah, I was like, I feel normal. Like, not completely normal, but way more normal than I ever have. And I woke up. So I then I fell back asleep like 30 minutes later or something. When I woke up, what was on my phone was a workout app. Like, because I was like, I feel amazing. Like, I'm going to work out today. Like, oh my gosh. And I was like, wow, I was really feeling good. Like, at (laughs) 4 a.m., I was like, I am feeling a burst of motivation. Like I feel normal for once. Like I'm going to do a weight workout. I didn't even do it that day. Like (laughs) I woke up, I kind of didn't even feel that great. I'm like, well, yeah, the motivation was fleeting, but yeah, it's, it's funny. It's just like, you just literally for me, I feel like I became a literal different person. Yeah. We just, I think we just put so much pressure on ourselves to, you know, we have so many expectations for ourselves and we put so much pressure on ourselves and when you go through something so life-changing, whatever it is, pregnancy or whatever, you have to adjust. You just have to and mm-hmm. and be okay with, I mean, still try your best, but if you adjust and you're like, okay, well, it's different now than it was. So, yeah. or than I thought it was going to be. So I just have to do my best with this situation. Mm-hmm. With what you're given at the moment. Struggling to feel like my husband still wants me after having a baby. Bye. I don't need to read more. Nine months postpartum and back to pre-pregnancy weight, but just don't look the same. I can shake the feeling that he's just stuck with the new me. Physically and emotionally, I am just very different than I was pre-baby. How do I help him and myself accept the new me? He's great and doesn't ever say anything. It's mostly just in my head and my point of view. Hmm. Hmm, That is hard if it's 
you're just kind of having this thought of it and it's nothing. Yeah, if he's not doing anything. Like, is he mm-hmm. doing or saying anything that's making you feel a little like, hmm? Yeah, it's, I mean, from what you've told me, what I can gather is maybe you're just feeling insecure about the new you. Mm-hmm. And so if you felt like he was in love with the person you were before you had a baby mm-hmm. and now you're different, it would make sense for you to feel insecure. Like, oh, wait. And now he's supposed to love this version of me. Right. Like I'm very different than I was. <laughs> I've actually heard that sentiment from a lot of people. I feel like postpartum is like, I mean, I don't, again, I'm like relating it to something else a little bit, but I remember like kind of just when I was in the absolute trenches of my like first and kind of second trimester, like uh, I remember crying and being like, I feel so different. Like, I feel like I've always just been this like energetic, fun girl. And then like now for Leif's sake, like I would Mm -hmm. be like, and now you just have to like literally do everything for me. And I'm just like on the couch and Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just like a different person now that I was like, I know it will be over at some point, but it just feels like our dynamic is not the same anymore Mm -hmm. because we're not just like, you know, Leif and I have a very like, I'm just relating this to the only thing I can relate to. Like, like fun dynamic where we're always like laughing and joking. And I just wasn't in the mood to like joke or do anything. Cause I always felt so sick mm-hmm. and with IVF and stuff. And I remember kind of having like similar, well, it wasn't that he didn't want me, but it was just kind of those thoughts it's of feeling very of, different. Like I yeah. was like, I feel, I would literally tell Leif, like, I feel bad for you that you have to like, I know I'm going through a lot, but I just feel bad that this is like your reality. Like every day you wake up and it's just me being like, Oh, I'm sick. Like, mm-hmm. and of course he was always like, yeah. so whatever like validating and like no it's this is just what we're what we're doing but yeah. I think that it's normal to feel different yeah definitely and to feel like if you don't like yourself how does anyone else yeah gonna adjust if you're not and like feeling you as like well. valuable or yeah like the same as you were when it's like okay well he liked me or he like fell in love with me like you said mm-hmm. in this stage yeah now I'm completely different so do you still yeah and it's kind of like, like you said when you have a little bit of a identity of which we all do of what we think is attractive to other people Mm -hmm. like oh I'm confident because I know I'm funny I know I you know can have a good time I know I'm pretty chill I know this and this and this then you You lose all that yeah then you lose those you're like wait why would somebody it doesn't even matter if they're worshiping the ground that you walk on it's just it's hard for you to know oh my gosh wait how would you I don't even like me yeah so I almost don't trust you I don't trust your taste. Yeah, that you're you a like bad me. taste now. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, so true. Yeah. So I think, I mean, it's hard because you're, you can't really do anything, you know, for him because it's almost worse if you're like just constantly saying to him and nagging him about like, I'm different. You don't like me. Do you like me still? Yeah. Do you like me still? Because it's like, I think it's more important for you to start accepting yourself Build confidence first. for yourself. Yeah. That will make everything better. Definitely. And I feel like there's pro- there's a ton of different ways to do that. But I feel like, yeah, if you can get some alone time, if you can work on things that you love, mm-hmm. if you can um, even literally just ex- affirmations, journal, like just yeah. little things that can like help build back that confidence will help. And try to, I think this is one of the most helpful things postpartum for me is I have felt that way too, where it's like, oh wait, I used to be, you know, physically able to do more and just different. And now, you know, I'm having to stay in bed now for this little bit, like immediately postpartum and then you're breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And so you're just taking it a little easier and you're not the same, like, yeah, let's all jump in the car and go do, you know. Yeah. Spontaneous or something. Yeah. So start focusing on, at least for me, this is what helps a lot is focusing on what I loved about myself as a mom and like what this new chapter, cause you're never going to be the exact same. It's just impossible. Again, it's like, you're not supposed to be, it would be weird if you were, Yeah, you don't have to be like, I want to be like a child again, like a free teenager again. It's like, okay, you can have some of the same elements, but it's okay to change. Mm-hmm. Like a it's fun, a, thing. a fun, no responsibility teenager or, you know, young adult is not the epitome of life. Like mm-hmm. that's not what people even a grown man should want, you know? It's like if he, if oh, to like, your husband. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you don't have to be like, well, I'm not free-spirited anymore and I don't, well, I mean, you can always be free-spirited, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. Now you have these new responsibilities. That's okay. And it's definitely okay for 
a grown man to accept that accept and, that and hopefully like think that. that's attractive. Yeah. yeah. You know, if he's married to you and literally got you pregnant. Like. Exactly. So find things that you love about your new self and focus on those and more maybe, so than what you've lost. Maybe communicate to him too, like that you could use some extra reassurance, just validation. Yeah. Like you don't have to be constantly like, do you like me? Do you like me? But just be like, honestly, I have been feeling just, I feel different. I feel a little mm-hmm. bit insecure. Like if you do have a positive thought about me, like please speak it because <laughs> yeah. I could use the reassurance. Like I just feel like mm-hmm. you should Definitely. be able to do that for sure. Yeah. Been dating a guy for almost nine months. Said I love you. Met each other's families. He says he sees a future with me. Talks about living together, how he would propose, kids. Always says how well we balance each other. But he's uncomfortable with the title of boyfriend, girlfriend. Side note, we say we're a couple that we're dating. We say significant other, but not boyfriend, girlfriend. We're 26 and 27. Do I stay because we love each other and wait it out or say goodbye because of the no title? Or how do I approach this conversation? I... I hate this jizz. You know what? I don't actually understand this. And I'm always so confused when I watch shows like Love Island or um, even The Bachelor when they're like, well, I guess The Bachelor one kind of makes sense where they'll be like, oh, I'm falling for you. That makes sense? Because that is different than like maybe being in love with someone. But I feel like there's all these weird, like even on Love Island, it'll be like, "What what is the thing they say? That they're um, like exclusive. Yeah, like, but that's not even boyfriend. Closed girlfriend. off. It's like closed off, exclusive, but that's not even like. Will you be my girlfriend? Will my you be my girlfriend? Like those are all separate entities. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is the freaking difference? You're yeah. dating, and and also, whenever people write in, they're like, we're talking, but we're not. Yeah. We're almost exclusive, and then now we're exclusive, but we're not dating. I'm like, it's all the same yeah. thing. You're dating. Like I don't understand what the. I personally don't actually understand. Like if we're saying I love you to each other, we're talking about a future and getting married. You can't call me your girlfriend. No, no, no. That's too far. That's weird. No, I I was going to say, I I, I understand maybe the difference between, okay, you're in the talking stage where you're not, you're still getting to know each other. You're like, okay, should we commit? commit? But then once that commitment happens, you said I love you. Exclusivity and boyfriend and girlfriend to me are the same exact thing. Just means you're not going to see other people. So What's the difference? again, it's it's kind of the thing with the wedding ring too that we talked about last yeah. time. My mom could not get over your comments. She was she called me crying <laughs> laughing. What? She's like, I'm dying at Chelsea saying like, does he wear an alpaca sweater? Like, does he? She's like, does he wear jeans in the house? She's like, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Your parents make me feel like the funniest person in the world because like, they remember totally. something I say from years ago. <laughs> they literally um. bring up like, oh, they keep bringing up clowns in the wild. It was something you said from, Clowns it's literally like a joke. I'm telling you, we'll have like jokes within my family yeah. that are just funny things Chelsea has said that they think are so funny. And I don't even know what they're talking about. They're like, remember Chelsea? I'm like, what? I don't know about that one. They're like, she said it on the podcast. I'm like, I don't know. We record so That's many. It's so funny. I guess you had said something at some point about how we were like, oh, clowns are so scary or something. And you're like, yeah, I would not want to see a clown in the wild. And they were like, that is the funniest like sentence. Like, Seeing a clown in the wild. I don't know. <laughs> That's like, so what? funny. I'm, I'm screaming. Dying. Thanks, John and Andy. <laughs> Making me feel funny. Um, <sighs> what I was going to say is, it's kind of the same thing as the wedding ring where it's like, okay, I get the, I get, you know, people can have their opinions. Like, why, why do we have to say that? Once they start pushing against it though, too much. Right. The resistance is what's weird to me. It doesn't right. matter what it is. But when the other person's like, yeah, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. Like we're serious. Aren't we? And it's like, no, I can't, I won't say that. I know. Why? I find it weird too. First I, of all, how often are you saying that? I feel like to me that actually, cause you're cheating on me. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that actually is a bit of a deal breaker and I don't mean to sound dramatic, but it's like, because it indicates a, to me, a weirder, like, I don't know if it's commitment issues. I don't know what it is, but like, not being able to put a title on something when you've been with someone for almost a year and you talk about literally having a family together. It's a weird boundary to have. That's a really weird, like, again, if it it had been a month, I'd be Mm -hmm. like, okay, give him a sec. Yeah. But like, you've been together, you've met each other's families, like the whole nine yards and he can't, that to me is weird. I I personally think that I would be like, okay, you you don't like me enough then Mm -hmm. because if you, you can't call me your girlfriend after all this time, like I want someone who's Obsessed with me. Do you feel like saying I love you should come before or after boyfriend and girlfriend? Because I almost feel like that's backwards. Like 
you almost should become boyfriend and girlfriend before you're saying I love you. Like, if you guys have been looking for some new pots and pans, look no further than Caraway. Chelsea and I both have their pans. We love them so, so much. I actually have their like baking set too. And not only do they work great, they're also very, very beautiful. They just really add to a beautiful aesthetic in the kitchen. Um, we've been talking about spring cleaning and maybe you're looking to refresh your pots and pans. I have the cream set. It is so, so cute. They have a really pretty green color, a navy, black, white, like a marigold color if you like yellow. There's a shade that's really pretty, kind of like a pinkish salmon color called paracotta. And with so many collections to explore, there is sure to be a caraway for every kind of cook. Caraway's internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home and comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. Ditch the chemicals with Caraway. Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware features a chemical-free ceramic coating so that food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will leach into your healthy ingredients. All sets also come equipped with complimentary easy-access storage solutions to keep the kitchen tidy. This is actually one of my favorite parts about my little pot and pan set from Caraway is that they have this little organizational thing that just hangs on the side of like this little kitchen caddy thing that I have and it's a perfect place to store all the lids so all the lids aren't like super unorganized all over my drawers and stuff like that and it's just awesome that it's non-toxic cookware so you don't have to be worried that any toxic chemicals are seeping into any of your meals for you and your family. So visit carawayhome.com slash what we said to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash what we said or use code what we said at checkout. Caraway non-toxic cookware made modern. I don't to think say there's like, like a I right or you, wrong, but, but I But then agree. you're not exclusive, but you're saying I love you to this person. I don't know. <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's a good point. And they or maybe not right after, right after or whatever, but they should be around the same time. It's not like, oh, we're saying I love you, but we're not boyfriend and but girlfriend you're for still, years. Like, you're, you're not exclusive. You're seeing other yeah. people, but you love someone. That yeah. is weird. That doesn't yeah. actually just make logical sense. Yeah. It would make more sense to be like, have we talked about this? Did Nick ever say like, will you be my girlfriend? I, or I was think we it, did, and I don't really remember. I don't remember it either. I think that, it was, it was kind of just like, I'm just I, like, I want to just date you. Yeah. But he, did, for, for me at least, Leif wasn't like setting up this elaborate thing. Like, will you no. be my girlfriend? Probably because we're Mormon and we got, we were getting married and <laughs> it's talking then engaged. <laughs> yeah. It's talking ring on the finger, getting yeah. engaged soon or getting married soon. I remember having but. a conversation with him. Whereas like we were, when we got back together, you know, the second uh -huh. time. Whereas like, oh, we were talking, maybe going to get back together. And then I remember having this conversation where he was kind of expressing, okay, yeah, you're like the girl for me. And yeah. I, but it was never like, and now we're exclusive. But it was just kind of like from that conversation. Yeah. We were, you're both like, yeah, we're dating yeah. each other. Yeah. And then you can be like, so we're boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Like, yeah. And it shouldn't be, oh, I don't want that title. It's, yeah. Why? Why? are you? Okay. I didn't care. But now that you're saying no, now I care. Exactly. No, I think that's weird. Yeah, I, I do think personally it's weird. don't vibe with that at all I think that that's weird I just think it's weird like <laughs> yeah. there should be no nothing like that that makes you truly I feel like within a year of a relationship like there should be nothing that your partner does that really makes you be like second guessing yourself like yeah. oh does he like me like there should be no guesses no with like the person you're gonna marry it mm -mm. should be like he's obsessed with me I'm obsessed with him like you know what I mean? Yeah. And you shouldn't ever be like, oh, that was weird that he, I'm not saying he can't ever do something weird, but like, oh, maybe he doesn't want to be with me. Like, I don't feel like that should yeah. be coming up for you when you're yeah. like about to get engaged or something. Yeah. It, you no. have to see how much pushback it really is getting. And then you start questioning. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because how is he going to feel about the title of husband? Right. Or fiance? Is he going to be like, well, we're engaged, but like, don't call me your fiance. Some people are weird about that. Like the title thing, I don't, which again, I can't understand. But. Again, I, I get n not caring about it. It's like, oh, we're, we love each other. We don't have to define it. But right. then once you're like, can we? someone's like, asking, no. yeah, it's no, like, we can't define it. Crazy. I refuse. It's like, yeah. okay, you're being crazy. That's being a bit much. Okay. This is my last one. Okay. Hello, JC and Chelsea. I'm a fellow AZ girly and also a fellow pregnant girly. Wait, do you see that? Um shit bloggers post is back oh no do you remember that account wait what is that they the profile picture is of the pointed foot pointed it's foot. gonna bring you back to like 2021 oh, maybe no 
where the summer Fridays jet lag mask, the laying on the bed, okay. the foot up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just post like classic things that everyone yes, does. Yes, like yeah, everyone's yeah. posting this pose. Wait, or... is that the thing we both got tagged in? Mm-hmm. Our pregnancy she, announcements? It's like a sheer dress. I'm assuming it's a Sheba. I don't know. Um, that account was like, hey, hey, babes, like <laughs> I'm back. Please. <laughs> and she's like the new trend or he or she, whatever. The account was like, um, the new trend, like, I hope you guys are catching up. It's pregnancy. And it was like all the girls <gasps> posting their pregnancy and they're all wearing, including us, like a Similar long white like, dress, yeah. a tight dress. Um, oh my gosh, that's funny. Anyways, and it confirmed what I was thinking and also what my hospital has been telling me that everyone's, everyone's pregnant. Like they're like, we're busier babies. than we've ever been. I'm like, oh gosh, the, the next baby boom. Jeez. Anyways, uh, fellow pregnant girly. So here's my situation. I am currently about halfway through my second pregnancy and I'm so, so overjoyed to be pregnant again. We have, we already have a sweet little two-year-old boy who is my whole world. We recently found out that we're welcoming another little boy and I feel so genuinely ashamed that I was a little disappointed when we found out. Babies are a blessing no matter what, but my husband and I have been talking about only having two kids and I was so convinced this baby was a girl. It feels so stupid to be feeling this way when all that matters is that the baby is happy and healthy. I just feel really alone in these feelings because it seems silly and ungrateful to be a little upset about it. I know I will absolutely love this little boy just as much as I love my son now, but I just was not expecting another boy. Any advice or am I being absolutely ridiculous? Okay. First of all, I'm pausing because I'm out of breath. (laughs) Um, I don't think you're being silly at all. I think I actually saw... A uh, okay, first of all, especially if you think this is going to be your last one, Mm -hmm. that is even more so validating. Like, I'm validating that that would be Mm -hmm. something that you would be a little bit disappointed about if you always thought you were going to have a girl or a daughter or whatever. And this TikTok was talking about how the gender disappointment not is people need to understand because sometimes. Well, first of all, I don't know why people post their gender reveals when they are disappointed and to the internet knowing how the internet's going to yeah, respond. Yeah, it's like you're, you're Your feelings are valid, get, but you, you yes. gotta know what's happen- gonna yeah, happen. You're going to get a uh, flack for that. Yeah. Like when you react and like, no, I didn't want this like yeah. publicly. People, which again, is perfectly valid, but I yeah. feel like, yeah, people are gonna be like, wow, you care. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Which, yeah, again, to each their own, because I could see how people who were trying to get pregnant would be like, oh, see that and be like, oh, so sad for you, you have a baby. But right. at it's the not same the time, like, just wanted. keep it right to yourself. Right. Anyways, everyone's feelings are valid, but bring like, fake back <laughs> yeah. um, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. However, this girl was talking about gender disappointment, how it's not about people need to understand. It's not that you don't want that baby. You're obviously going to love that baby mm-hmm. no matter what they are. Mm-hmm. It's the morning of what could have or you thought should have been. Mm-hmm. So it has nothing to do with the baby in your belly. It has nothing to do with the boy that you're having. It's not that you don't want him. It's not that anything like that. Yeah. It's just the aspect of mourning the thought of a daughter you thought you were going to have. Yeah. And that's so valid. So normal. There's nothing wrong with that yeah. to me, at least. I think either way, it's normal to be disappointed. And that mm-hmm. is coming from someone who has gone through infertility as well, which again, like you said, I could kind of see that where it's like, if someone's like, I just wanted it to be a girl. And it's like, okay, well at least you can get pregnant. Like I do see that perspective, but again, everyone's living in their own reality Mm -hmm. and you, you can't just discount someone's feelings because they're going through a different struggle than you. And Mm so I think that, yeah, you're totally allowed to be disappointed. And I mean, any of my friends who have felt like that, like I had a friend who, I'm not just saying this. It wasn't you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like this girl I know she who's also boy. having two boys. No, but I had a friend who got pregnant and she, same thing. She was like, I'm only having two kids mm-hmm. and she got pregnant with a boy. The second one, she, basically the exact situation. Yeah. She was like, I'm convinced it's a girl. Like, I'm so happy. Yeah. And then it was a boy and she was like, mm-hmm. I'm actually so sad because like, I don't want to go through another pregnancy and, and have another child. But yeah. like, I really wanted, I just wanted to have one of each really mm-hmm. bad. That's how she felt. And rounding it out like then she had the baby and she's like I can't imagine my life without him like yeah. I'm obsessed with him and I feel like that's pretty much the sentiment that like everyone shares every time is like once you have the baby you're just like not that you mm-hmm. maybe that goes away but you at least are like oh this I feel like he was meant to be in our family and like yeah. I love him so much I'm just like I can't imagine not having him yeah so 
100%. I, I can even relate to, I mean, I don't think this is going to be my last kid, but you never know. Mm-hmm. And I really thought it was going to be a girl as well. Like right when I got pregnant, I was like, oh, I feel like it's going to be a girl. I feel like it's going to be a girl. And based off of nothing but like different symptoms. And I was like, oh, I, and then you just get your head wrapped around it. And then as soon as you have an idea of something, or you an start attachment getting attached of any to kind, it. Yeah. Yeah. And ob- we found out so early. So it wasn't even like I had that much time to, but even when we found out it was a boy, I, I had that feeling of like almost the loss of a daughter where it's like, oh wait, no, I thought in my head, I was like having all these names and like ideas of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a daughter. This is so fun. Like Obviously, I, I've always wanted a daughter as well, and I, I have a son, so, right. you know, when I first found out, I was like, oh, okay, that was, I'm so shocked, and I am, like, a little bit, you know, sad that I am not having a daughter right now. Well, but it also hindsight, puts a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you are like, well, maybe I'll have one more, it's like, well. Yeah, what if I just never have a yeah, daughter Yeah, and at this again, point? it's something that you have to grapple with either yeah. way. Like, if you only have girls, and you want a son, and if you want only have sons, exactly. you want, it's like, okay, like. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like, okay, well, exactly that, where it's like, okay, I could, even if I have more kids, I could just never have a daughter. Right. And that, that occurs to you more, I think, with your second than your first. Your first sure. year is just like, wh- who, who cares? cares? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what we have. Um, and then I think probably the more kids you have, I've had friends, yeah, it's like their third or fourth, and it's the same gender as they have, and they want the other one. And obviously, they love that baby so much, right. but it's the the idea of losing what you thought. Mm-hmm maybe your whole life you would have. Yeah. Um, But now hindsight, I mean, I haven't even had the baby yet, but now I can't imagine, like you said, the other way. Being a girl or something. Yeah. Yeah. After like a month of being like, okay, wow, I'm getting over the shock of I'm having another boy. Now I'm obsessed. Now I can't even imagine having a girl where I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. Like this just makes sense. Yeah. You know, having a brother for case, like it's all flowing. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think just give yourself time again. Yeah. It'll, You'll be time. Time will definitely the less help. you shame yourself for it, the faster you'll get over it for sure. Okay, last one. My mother in law is not respecting our boundaries during our pregnancy. We oh, announced <laughs> we announced our pregnancy to her and asked her not to tell anyone so we could share the news. Suddenly, we're getting messages from people congratulating us on our pregnancy. No. When we were ready, we announced we we're having a girl, and again asked if she could keep it a secret until we had told all of our people. You guessed it. I had friends messaging me. Congrats that it was a girl. Both times it was confirmed. She spilled the beans. She was apologetic about it. But now that we're due soon, how do I make it clear to her? She's not allowed to announce our birth before us. Do we tell all our people before we tell her? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, maybe not, but people got to learn. They have to have consequences for their actions. It's like we gave you two chances. You screwed up both times. Yeah. So now you will be not getting information from us. I know. I mean, the birth is kind of like maybe harder to hide. Yeah. Just hiding Uh, the baby. I don't know. I I go back and forth. It's like, it really is just a personal thing because some people just don't care about like privacy over those things. And some people really, that's that they really value that. The the pregnancy thing, like announcing you're pregnant and some people are just like, I don't care who knows. Like, do you know what I mean? And some people are like, please don't tell anyone. Like I really want to. For a million different reasons. There could mm-hmm. be a million reasons why you want to be private or you don't want to be private about these scenarios. But I think like for me, honestly, I don't know if this is like a good thing, but I feel like in going through IVF and pregnancy and stuff, I have become like, I became, I guess, much more private and closed off with even like not super close people in my life, but even the outs, getting the at all. small like circle smaller. Or, yeah, yeah. Keeping Which I the guess circle small. your mother in law is like pretty close to the circle. So, like I told, we told my, our mother or Leif's mom and my parents like pretty uh, similar times, and it was like mm-hmm. very, we were very early pregnant because they all knew we were doing IVF. So I'm like I can't relate to this specific thing. My mother in law wasn't spilling the beans, but I'm just saying like I feel like going through pregnancy has made my circle smaller and made me more like. Like I didn't tell people that it was a girl for a long time. Like just mm-hmm. things like that. I don't know why that is. Yeah. I don't know if it's something that happens where you're just like, this is my information that I want to have right now. But like my advice would literally just be to like, keep it to yourself more. Yeah. Like literally be more private. I think maybe because of social media, I'm not kidding. Even, even if you don't have followers, you'd never post it. The possibility of it going around faster is just more apparent yeah. to people nowadays. I think maybe you know, back then, back then 
if you had a baby or if you got pregnant and you told someone, you know, it's only going as fast as when people see each other, right? You know, or, or maybe call, if they call, they're not like texting each other or sending. No, yeah. but information we just know go, just gets spread like a wildfire. Mm-hmm. So it feels you you feel even more protective of pictures, news, information about yourself because you're like, this could get away from me so fast. Yeah, and you have to understand too with like pregnancy. I feel like that's a very personal thing. Like. I'm talking to, well, I don't know why I'm speaking to the mother now. I'm like, and I will address you now. She's, <laughs> she's not the one listening. Address to the you directly. <laughs> I will be. Um, is like, some people, if they've gone through, because because sometimes to me, I'm like, why does it have to be such like a secret? It's like, we're pregnant, but we're not telling anyone. It's like, okay, like it's really not that deep. Like, mm-hmm. tons of people get pregnant. But I think like, and I'm not saying she has, I have no idea. But sometimes if you have like anxiety during your pregnancy or you've had a loss before or something, it's like you actually really are like, you don't want a lot of people to know mm-hmm. because you don't want it to be this huge thing. And then heaven forbid something happens and you have to like now go back and tell all these people and like face this thing. Yeah. So I don't know. Sometimes like maybe making that clear to your mother-in-law being like, that really stresses me out. Like, mm-hmm. please respect like our privacy we yeah. we want to share it with you. Like make it clear. It's like we want you in our inner circle. Yeah. We that's why we, we want to trust you. Yes, we want to trust you. That's why we shared the such exciting news with you. But when you go and tell people, yeah. Then we feel like we can't, we can't trust, trust and then it makes us not want to share mm-hmm. exciting news with you. Yeah, exactly. Especially when it's I think just when you're it, with pregnancy specifically, it's protection over your child almost. It's just you don't for some reason the privacy feels like protection. So Yeah. Even with them being born, it's like sometimes you just don't. It's not that you don't want people to. It's nice to have people to celebrate and support you. Yeah. But at what, you know, time that you want and at what cost, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think, yeah, you just have to communicate that to her before. And if she seems serious, maybe you can trust her and be like, okay, well, we'll let you know. But with the birth thing, like, yeah, I honestly would maybe like, not tell her, give it a few days and then be like, yeah. Hey, like, and tell her on your own terms. Be yeah. like, sorry, you again, if she's like, well, what the heck? Like, why didn't you tell me? It's like, yeah. we, we told you about big news a few mm-hmm. other times and you told people and we yeah. just really didn't want it out there. So sorry. Yeah. yeah sorry. That's what it is. <sighs> why do people do that? Why do people do that? It's so bizarre. And I think with the older generation, truly to give them the benefit of the doubt, they don't understand social media like we do. Mm-hmm. So whether they tell one person, they're like, oh, if I tell my friend, they won't tell anyone, you know, or maybe they'll tell someone, but I'll yeah. never get back to that person. Yeah, right. Both social media just and just texting and ways to communicate on WhatsApp, whatever people yeah. use, Facebook Messenger, it just gets around so it fast. Does. It and I don't know if they know that. So she maybe told her friend or, you know, thinking, oh, it won't get right. back to them or like, who cares? But yeah, we just know. That's why we don't tell anyone anything because <laughs> yeah. it's like, we just know. Education is key. Yeah. We have to educate the boomers of our of our world. Yeah. We have to take um, care of them, protect them. <laughs> thank you guys for writing in for advice. As always, we have a little highlight on our Instagram if you're new to the podcast or if you ever want to write in for advice that you can just click. It's like a little Google Doc. You can write in what you're yeah. wanting to get advice on and we will reply to you. And feel free to give us a little more context. I'm sorry, we will not reply to you. I'm like, <laughs> and we will be personally- We will be coming to your house um, taking we, care of the issue. <laughs> we I will be showing up at your mother-in-law's house. <laughs> we will possibly read it on the podcast and give some advice. Yeah. But you guys can watch on YouTube. You can follow along on Instagram. Everything's at what we said podcast. Um, we love you guys so, so much. And that's, that's what, what we, we said. said. Bye.